We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tableau Live. We have a few participants joining right now. We are going to wait just a little bit longer to give everybody a chance to join and we will get started. Um, so we probably will get started in about two minutes. Um, but thank you for joining. We're so glad that you're here. If you do have questions that you'd like to answer, you're welcome to find the chat and go ahead and put it in the chat or the Q&A, actually, either place would be fine. Um, if need be, we can also change your role um, to allow you to talk. So you'll just let us know when you're able to do that. I'm not recording yet, um, so I will be recording in just a few minutes. Um, I will give another minute or two, as I mentioned, and uh, allow everybody to uh, join it here shortly. Hello everyone, welcome to Tableau Live presented by Boulder Insight. Um, we are starting to do this on the first Friday of every month, but with July 4th being last weekend, um, we actually are doing it on the second Friday this month, but look forward to reaching out and meeting with us once a month. It's uh, our way of giving back to the Tableau community and staying connected with our customers. Um, and this is a session that we're um, doing and getting a great response to um, from lots of our customers coming in. And we will be answering your questions live every month. Um, so I'm Heather Dottillo, I'll be your host today. You'll notice my colleagues, Kevin Swearingen and Chris Cox. Uh, Kevin is our UX UI master and uh, Chris Cox is our Tableau Ninja Master for all things and a great mentor to you. So we uh, started this in our Tableau user groups and we used to call this session Stump the Chump. Chris is the chump, so you get to try to stump him today as well. So um, we, uh, when you got the email, we did have a form. Let me go ahead and share my screen here um, that you all should have received. Mm. There we go. Um, so you should have received a form that looks something like this um, as a link for it. I'm gonna put that link um, in the chat today. So anytime uh, that you're struggling with some questions and you have them in between these Tableau Live sessions, this is a way to reach us with your questions and let us know um, what questions you do have. We received one question in advance. You all are welcome to answer questions um, as well otherwise. Um, and uh, the one question that we did get today, let me pull that up. Um, was regarding um, from Doug Snyder, and I see Doug that you are on the call, so I will allow you to talk here too. I'll change your um, uh, uh, ability to be able to do that, your permissions. Um, but Doug had talked about um, needing to create a dual access map with a spatial file and an Excel file, um, and do the files have to be joined? And also, could you review the steps to create a dual access map? So we're going to start with that question, but if you did not submit a question in advance, no problem. That's what this is for and why it's called Tableau Live. Chris will be handling those questions as well. So um, Doug, let me actually get to your permissions here and I'll allow you to talk as well. Um, so if you have more questions around um, this, I'll walk through how to build a dual access map. I'll talk about um, what version, if you're in 2019.2 uh, now or higher, you have this make point option that makes this a whole lot easier to do. So we're gonna kind of walk through that. Um, but if you have any questions you wanna add in addition to it, Doug, feel free to, to let us know. Um, so one of the things that we'll be sending out to anybody that's interested in um, is the recording of this, but I also have a workbook that I created for one of our Tableau user group meetings that really talks about when you have more than one measure um, that you want to use in a view, how do you go about doing it? So there's all kinds of um, charts that I've uh, created and what we have here is a starter workbook that will give you the step-by-step -step instructions and then the solution as to what that would look like. Um, and we've done this for all different kinds of chart types. So if you have a combined axis, 
um, a stacked bar, a bar and bar graph, a bullet graph, um, dual axis charts. And so they each have that starter and solution. So we'll be sending that to everybody afterwards, um, or at least putting a link to it um, so you can get to that. But let me start off by just talking about how to build a basic dual axis map to start with through those steps. Um, and then I'll talk about the, how you're gonna join those two files together. Um, so to create a dual axis map, um, and I'm um, in the 2020 uh, point two version. So things look a little different if you haven't seen this um, lately. So measures are now sometimes on top and your dimensions are on the bottom and they're not quite labeled. So if you're using an earlier version of Tableau, it might look a little bit different. But the key to be able to make a dual axis map is you first have to be able to make a map in general. Um, and to make a map, you must have one of your chart types um, that is actually a geographic role. So I'm going to drag state right onto detail, or I could drag it right where it says drop fields here. Either place will go. That will create the map based on the states that I have in this data set. From there, what I can do is then I'm going to make this into a filled map. So I'm going to take a measure like profit, and I'm going to drag profit onto color. When I do that, it's now created my map looking at my profitability by state. Um, but maybe I also want to look at sales and I want to do this on the same map with a dual axis map. So the way that you do that is you have to have two different maps in order to be able to create that. So what I'm going to do is take latitude or longitude. I could do either one of them. I'm going to hit control, click on it and make a copy, drag that to the right. So you'll notice now I have two maps, both are the same right now, and I have three different marks cards. So this is for all, here's the marks card for the profit, and here's another marks card. And so what I'm gonna do is remove profit from this one, and instead I'm gonna bring my sales measure onto size. When I do that, you'll notice that the size of the circles will start to change. One of the things that we like to do is let those pop. So I'm going to go into color and then to border and I'm going to add a white border to those. So now I have my two different maps. The last step is to do that dual axis where I'm going to pull this circle map on top of the filled map. So the best way to do that is to click the drop down arrow on the second latitude and click dual axis. When you do that, Voila, you pull up your dual axis map and you've got both um, uh, an ability to see what's happening with our profitability as well as the size of the circle showing our sales. So let me pause and see if there's any questions um, around the steps in creating a dual axis map. All right, great. Now, the other question um, that Doug had was, okay, I have a spatial file and I also have a text file. So I um, created this uh, file just looking at, um, actually looking at some national parks. So let me just go to the data source and I'll kind of show you um, what that is. Uh, so if I look at the national parks, I'm gonna actually remove this and we'll do that from scratch. I just put in a couple national parks in latitude and longitude. So this is my text file bringing in the place name of the national parks, the latitude and the longitude for it. Then what I'm going to do is I brought in a spatial file and let me, um, I'll just show you, I would go to add and we're going to do what's called a cross database join and you'll add in a spatial file. So when I do that, I had a spatial file that I downloaded um, and I would connect to that. So I already took that step and you'll see that here. Then all you need to do is do a cross database join and we're gonna have to do something that's a little unusual from what we, we may have done before where you're gonna do a create join calculation. And so there's this newer function in 2019.2 called make point or make line. We're gonna do the make point one. Um, and we're going to bring in our latitude and our longitude. And we'll get our, our calculation. Then the trick here is that we want this to be a full outer joint. Whoops, I did not save that. Hang on. That happens every time I do a live demo. At some point, I will forget, forget to save a calculated field. Now click OK. 
we want to do a full outer join and we're going to click on geometry. When you do that, you now get this option for intersects. Once you do that, you can click update now. Now your files are going to be connected and you'll be able to use those files. So if I go here to demo this a little bit, um, you can see we've got those files joined. It's going to take just a second. And then you again are looking for a geographic role in order to make your map. We're going to use the spatial file geographic role and this is going to show up in your measures. That's the big difference between where spatial files geography shows up versus a um, uh, uh, Latin longitude like the text file that we have. That's, that geometry and geographic role will be in dimensions. When it's a spatial file, it can create polygons, shapes, lines, points with a spatial file. All you do is take geometry to detail or into the, the view for um, that to create the map. And then what you can do is bring like the place name onto color. That should fill that out. I can even get rid of the null so we don't have to see all of those. Maybe zoom out a bit and you can see those five national parks that we had there and pulling those places in. So I will pause there again. And Doug, you are able to talk. Do you have, does that kind of answer your questions around, um, first of all, how you do your joins with a cross database join with a spatial file um, and how you build a dual axis map. So I will pause for a second and see if you have any questions. Uh, yes, that, that's a great help. Thank you very much. That, uh, that took care of it. I was able to, uh, I, I was seeing what I was doing wrong with it. And now it's uh, now it makes sense. So thank you. You want to show them the link to that uh, that 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 tableau kind of knowledge paper, Heather? Yeah, this is a really great blog post um, here on this make line make point function, um, okay. and it's made things a whole lot easier. And I will put that in the chat as well for everybody. Um, as well. So I'm so glad that worked. And thank you for giving us a question in advance too. That gives us a chance to think on it um, a little bit beforehand. So no, that was great. Thanks very much. Absolutely. And this will be recorded, Doug, too. So you'll see step by step and that Twibix file I'll share with the, the steps. I did not type up all the steps for the cross database join yet, but I'll, um, we have this uh, blog post too in here for you. Okay, thank you. I'll, of course. Any other questions that you all have today? If not, don't worry, we have some more content that we'll be talking about, but I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a little bit. Um, and if there's anybody that does have a question, you can put it in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. I believe it should be showing up in the chat um, are your two options um, that you could do that. Um, you can also raise your hand, that's an option, and I can take you off mute and allow you to, to um, join us that way with questions. Easy crowd today. I know, but lots of people on, so we will continue to see. So I think what we'll do then, Kev, is go to our previously planned agenda, um, since we don't have anyone asking a question you right now. You wanna do that? Yeah, so if, um, Somebody does it. come up with a question, just uh, let us know if you put it in the Q&A, I will be monitoring that. Um, and what we're gonna do is um, I am gonna hand this over to Kevin um, because uh, we had a really great use case that came up this month. Um, we were asked to create a custom curriculum for high school students. Um, uh, for a couple of the Tableau execs um, for their own kids. Everybody's summer camp is getting canceled. Um, and so parents are scrambling to find um, meaningful summer camps for their kids that can be done virtually. So we have created a custom curriculum. We'll be actually launching that um, next week on our website. And we're gonna be holding a session the last week of July and the first week of August. So stay tuned um, if you have kids and you're looking for a camp for them of what they're gonna do. Um, uh, it's a really great skill set for adults to have as well as high school students. Um, it's great for, we also had a middle schooler on, it'd be great for college students um, as well. Um, so we'll be opening that up. Um, and one of the lessons that we talk about and end with is really about how do you build a dashboard that actually has that wow factor. So Kevin is gonna talk a bit about how do you bring UX D design to a dashboard and tell a great data story. Um, and so this is one of my favorite 
uh, stories that um, uh, Kevin brought up. I don't know if any of you are seeing lots of Miller moths. Um, we're seeing tons of them in uh, Denver. I guess they're always there, but this is the first time in Longmont where I live that we're just, they're just living in all the trees at night. <laughs> There's a whole lot of them. So Kev is going to kind of walk you through his, his Miller moth uh, dilemma of the summer that he's been facing. And uh, you'll get to hear a lot more about how he solved this and created a beautiful dashboard that shows it. So I will mute Kev and hand this over to you. You got it. So I'm going to give like kind of just a kind of a briefer demo. I'm not going to drag you guys through everything we did in the course because it's, you know, time permitting and everything like that. But I, you know, as I said, I've got a UX background and a love for data. And also because of my UX like artist background, I'm a little off as a human. And so what I did, like anybody, um, I started keeping track of all the Miller moths I killed and how I killed them, right? So there were different ways. I experimented with different techniques and I kept track of the date, the disposal, love of effort it took to kill them, level of mess, the outcome, position I killed them at, and then the weapon of choice. How did I go about killing them? And then I wrote a kill ratio in Tableau, which was pretty straightforward. And then, um, you know, did the kill happen or did the kill not happen? So that's kind of the data, very straightforward, just a fun little side project. But we used it to kind of demonstrate what you can do with it. And I'm going to share with you some resources I use um, that kind of the UX community uses that maybe the Tableau community is not aware of and give you guys some tips and pointers on how to really take, you know, what we'll call a out of the box um, Tableau experience, right? These are all these are all my dashboards. And they're putting together using um, actions. So I wrote an action. Um, if anybody has any question on actions, if they want to move from actions to filters, I'd recommend asking that question and having Chris give you a demo because he's kind of the master at them. But basically, this is this is data, but we can do better. Is the statement right? We've got a lot of distractions going on. So we did use one big image. That's our focal point. So we call this a data hero, right? Just like on a website. If you go to any website, you see a big image that's called a hero, right? So in our shop, we've adapted what's the data hero. And the reason for that is sometimes dashboards can get so packed, you don't have any room to tell that story. And a hero makes you have that room, right? If you don't have a hero, then you haven't focused the story or focused the data and told that story correctly, right? So in this case, weapons used um, is kind of like our data hero. We've got level of effort, so we can real quick click in here and see, you know, what weapons, position, you know, everything like that that we're after. We used a tennis racket, high level of effort, low level of kills. Um, but how do we take this to the next level and make it look more, I'll, I'll just say it, more like an app instead of just like an out of the box Tableau experience? So that's what I'm gonna show you now. So everything here is just how we're used to, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down shift and drag this and I'm gonna turn these into floating uh, containers just real quick. So when you drag and drop, they lock to a grid. All I'm doing is making them floating, right? Something we've all done a thousand times probably. Just add a little context here while you're doing that is yeah. You know, uh, so 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 I think 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 pretty much, and Heather, you can validate this, but but I think pretty much all of the training uh, that 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 you get through Tableau kind of kind of uh, focuses on like tiled. We absolutely. Um, is that, is that, is that, yeah, and mm -hmm. and so and so and so tiled is fine, but you, but there but there's so many things that you can do if you um, well one it's actually faster for. Um, I mean, actually, this this this, this is something that's not not documented as why, but for some reason, if you have the exact same graphs and everything else, um, the the dashboard is faster. If it's like you floating, so all all the um, all these like elements being floating by the, by themselves uh, make it make it faster, and then what Kevin's going to show you is the ability to, well, now that we have floating, then we can actually have things in in actually different different layers. So, so a lot of times if I'm building quickly, I will do exactly what Kevin did. I will build it tile just to get everything on there. 
I'll create some actions, try to get my user story, then I'll go back and just make them floating to make it make it actually make make sense. So just want to add that context in there. Great, thanks. And I didn't know it made it faster, Chris. I learned something new today after all these years of working with you. So. And then throwing this out there to the group, you guys got a question along the way. This is we're here for you guys today. So if you have a question on wait, how'd you do that? Throw it in the throw it in the QA or uh, raise your hand. Um, happy to happy to answer or slow down at any point. So what we need is a background, and this is where I'm going to share some resources. We we kind of need a background and we kind of need a design direction. And you don't need to be a designer to really use some of these tools and tips I'm going to show you. So first of all, there's a site called Unsplash. Anybody out there that uses photography or needs to use photography or just needs an image for a pitch deck or whatever you have, right? This site is called Unsplash. All these photos are license free. So royalty free. So you don't have to worry about paying for a license or anything like you do with Getty. So um, in this case, I'm just gonna type in uh, Miller Moths and voila, you know, works just like a search engine. So I wanna point out a couple things about data and imagery, because this happens a lot. Data is your hero. Data is why people are here. The imagery really is to add a level of professionalism and a level of interest, right? Like we've all seen great working computer programs that have that are hard to interact with or are horribly designed and we just don't like them. Well, the same happens with dashboards. If your dashboard isn't really designed to the best of its ability, no one's gonna stay around it long enough to read that data story, right? Some people are, but some people are just gonna come in and just get that one piece of data they need and jump back out. So the point of actually bringing a level of UX to your design is, is actually about engagement with your data story, right? You're ensuring that someone wants to stick around. I actually worked at a place where they said, we should use Kevin's, Kevin's program instead of Tableau. And I'm like, I'm using Tableau, right? So the, the, the image should never overpower the data story. And one thing that happens is you can pick an image that's too cluttered. So this image here, way too cluttered. If I layer data over the top of this, it's just gonna look horrible, right? It's gonna fight with the data and you're just, it, it, it doesn't help tell the data story. So the exercise we're about to go through, it doesn't help the data story, it hurts the data story, right? This one's a beautiful one to use, right? We've got a lot of imagery right in here. We can layer our data right there, layer our data right there, but it's also, this guy's right in the middle. So it kind of in, it will interfere with the data flow, you know, if we're not careful. Same problem here. We've got too much going on in this background. It's gonna compete with the data. Our moth's dead in the center. This one's good. If we had limited data, we could plug it all there and crop that down. But I went with, for this exercise, where is the guy? I found this guy and I cheated. I modified it a little bit. So what you're gonna see, I did modify it, but basically I cropped it down and turned it sideways. I think that's the guy you got. Anyway, we'll get moving. So, so this is a resource you can use for free that can really help you out. Another resource I'm gonna show you, I'll just stick with the resources real quick. Dribble with three Bs. This is kind of like a Pinterest for designers, right? So if you're struggling with how to lay out your imagery, because Chris said it best one day we're talking, Canvas or Tableau gives you a blank canvas to work on. Sometimes you don't know how to lay out your data because you got a blank slate, right? Or you get caught up in laying out the data the same way and all your dashboards look the same. You can actually come to this site and find people working with data, you know, that are laying out data in different ways using different like style, styles, color stories, images, you know, white, dark uh, UX colors, the whole nine yards, right? So this is one resource. So you always try not to steal, but you can inspire from it. So in this case, like, that's pretty interesting. That color of green along with that black and white, it's pretty cool. So you can go here and get inspired for layouts, color stories, and, you know, typical UX. The last thing I'm going to show you, and I'll get moving on to Tableau piece, is this is for icons. So just like I showed you how you can get images and everything like that. The noun project is kind of the go-to for a lot of people in this industry for finding an icon. So if you needed an icon for, let's say just profit, 
you just hit profit and all of a sudden you've got thousands of icons that you can use as shapes in your Tableau design or use in the background, right? So if you don't know how to draw, you don't need to. You can get things like this. If it doesn't look right, hopefully you've got an artist as a friend you can tap. Um, but anyway, these are three great resources you can use to kind of help you do what we're about to do. And all those okay. links I've just put into the chat for you all as well. Cool. So now we're going to add a background image. All we do is drag the image from here. I'm holding down shift. And that's going to prompt me, choose an image. And of course, I've got to jump to the folder. Thank you, Tableau. And all I'm going to do is find the image. Again, I did crop this down, you know, from a Photoshop image. But there's our little moth guy. We have plenty of room for telling the data story. And I added a couple containers up here um, for the KPIs to kind of organize them a little better. I'm going to open that up. And now I'm dead center. So I'm going to hold down control. I don't know what it is on a PC, but basically it's like a right click. And no, nope, I don't need to do that. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to go up to layout and I'm going to zero out my XY. And then I'm going to type in the size of my image. In this case, it's 16 by 900. And I've covered the data and everything. So now I'm going to control click, basically right click, and I'm going to change my float order. I'm going to send this all the way to the back. So for those of you who've never played with Tableau in this way, there, you can layer it just like you can in art programs or just like you can in a PowerPoint or something like that. You can overlap and kind of control Tableau that way. Let's send it to the back. So now I want to get back to my story. I want to say, what are people probably going to focus on the most? I think they're going to focus most on my weapons used. So I'm going to come in and return this to being my data hero. But this is where the US, UX exercise comes in, right? If something's not helping the, des the design, it's hurting the design, right? So where are we redundant? Where are we telling the story twice? And I'll show you. So for example, number of records. We really need to see that because we have that here, right? And we have like the kills up here. Do we really need to see number of records? And do we really need to see 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 all the way up? Because we've got the numbers right on top of the bars. So let's get rid of that. And then I'm going to get rid of the title. The reason I'm going to get rid of the title is I want more control over the title. So I could easily format it and turn it white, but I want to have a little bit more say on where I put it. So you don't have to do this step, but I do this step. So I'm going to get rid of that. That little guy up there, I don't need him either. So I'm going to hide him. So now I'm down to a big white image on a color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to control click format. And I'm going to, to the sheet, I'm going to change the shading. So what I'm going to do is actually change it to none and it goes transparent. Okay. I still have these lines here. I don't think these lines help anybody. Like I, I find it hard to believe if I showed this to someone, they'd say, wow, thank God you had those lines on there, Kevin, because otherwise I wouldn't have known what those bar graphs were saying. So that means they're a hindrance, right? So we're going to get rid of them. Thank God this is a painful way to do it. What's that? Yeah, thank God you had those lines on there, Kevin. I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Thanks, well, we Chris. can at least see the height, you know, if you were a criminal and it's a mugshot, it might work. For the, exactly. The right data story. So there's a lot of things like in here like that that you just don't need. Um, I want to change my font. So I'm going to change the whole sheet. I'm going to change that over to white. So now I've got just the essence of the data. I don't have anything I don't need except for that white line. There's always something I can't find. Not there. There. Maybe it is. Do you know what that line is, anybody? There it is. Yeah. It's my access line. So now it's nice and clean. People can focus. They're not distracted. It does matter, things like this, right? And you already spend a lot of time formatting anyway, so why not take the extra step? Um, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is the color palette I chose. So I just searched online and found a color palette that I loved on dark. So 
you could find this on that site I showed you, Dribble. You could find something like that and then apply it to your own, um, you know, uh, dashboards. But I'm just going to use this color story to kind of polish this off. So I've got my primary color here. I'm going to go in and change my color, more colors. And then the hex decimal on this one is F54 B64. I'm going to hit OK. If you so now when I jump back, what's that? I was going to say that we could have programmed all those into, uh, you, know, you know, it's all in a preferences file. But yeah, yeah. It brought down for the colors. We just didn't do that here. But if, if there's something we use over and over, like we, ha we have a lot of, um, a lot, lot of kind of stoplight uh, color, color palettes uh, that we use. So if we use it over and over, then uh, it may take the time to go ahead and do that, that stuff. But this we didn't need to. Thanks, Chris. So, so now I know what you're thinking, like all the time I have to spend doing what I just did here to that, but you really don't. So what you can do is you can go into the image or go into this sheet. I'm going to control click and I'm going to copy formatting. So now all I got to do, that's just text. So that's not going to matter, but on my position, all I got to do is uh, control click and paste formatting. All that's going to go away. It's going to color everything. Again, paste formatting. Paste formatting. Paste formatting. So I'm here, you know, it didn't get rid of everything, right? But it got rid of a lot of it for me. And that's the quirky thing with paste formatting. It doesn't seem to always go as planned but it usually does get you, I'd say 90% there is a fair statement. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow what I did for the rest of it. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of all the things that I don't need. And since, the, since those lines uh, were, were vertical, versus in the one you copied from was actually horizontal. You might be able to copy format those out as well. I don't know. I don't know. If, I can't remember if those work or not. What do you mean? So those, 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 those vertical lines. So all, all of these charts, uh, the, the, uh, the, the bars are going side to side versus mm -hmm. the one you copied formatting from was going top to bottom. Uh, so you think that's why it didn't can't or copy over? Yeah, maybe just just try it real quick to see. So, so go go go, go get from that one, and see. I, I don't I don't know that for sure. So, but I agree that copy paste formatting doesn't always work perfectly every time. We'll find out right here though. That's interesting. That'll be fun if that's true. Right. Tableau Live: Things We Learn. That is good. It did work. That. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so now we're gonna get into. Let's see, I'm gonna hide my title, hide outcome. Yeah, the other thing too is that once you get used to this style, so a lot of times I'll build, instead of building the graphs and go and have to edit them afterwards, I'll build one, I'll spend time making it perfect, and then I use that as my as my as my default for, for, for every other graph that I'm gonna build. So I'll just, I'll just duplicate it, change out the dimension. Typically it's the same measure, uh, but that way all these, these formatting things, like him having to hide those different um, headers and stuff. So that, that would be something that would already have actually been there. So, but you kind of, kind of get used to it after a while. So, so now my problem is everything looks the same, right? So luckily I've got this color palette and sometimes you want everything to look the same, sometimes you don't. So luckily, 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 luckily I've got this color palette. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a secondary color, maybe use both the gray and the white. I'm gonna change the color on some of these. So this is my outcomes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click into here and I'm gonna change my color again, more colors, and I'm gonna change that to a gray. And then I'm going to see what it looks like. It falls into the background, 
but sometimes you want it to. So if, if everything stands out, if everything has the same weight to it, then nothing stands out. So sometimes you want your secondary metrics, maybe you're like even further down in your data story, but you want them to fall more into the background. You want them to not overpower the hero. Um, this one, I'm just gonna color them white. And I'm gonna color the rest of them kind of white. And I'm just going to reorganize just a little bit here. Kind of like grouping my whites together. Um, another thing we like doing is if you're doing a layout, keep everything symmetrical, right? So think about your alignment. So to the eye, this is out of line. So your brain jumps from here to here to there. When you have them in line, your brain's more organized and can actually follow it better. Like it's almost like, think about placement. Like if someone took a sentence and scrambled it on you, your brain wouldn't like it and you'd be going, what, why do they do that? You know? So remove anything like that, that you can. can so explain the alignment a little bit different. Cause like, cause like I know that a lot of times, so in that top chart, we have ground in air unknown. So, so the, when he, when he, when he says align, really the thing that you want to align is the actual bars. So the bars from that top graph to the bottom graph is, is what makes it look good. Because a lot of times you'll have really long like dimension labels in one graph. So if you have them stacked on top of each other, just if you line up where that bar starts, that, that's, that's kind of kind of key. Is that, is that a fair way to state it, Kevin? I think it is. I think that's spot on. And you want to so show So I'm just going to do weapon. What's that? You want to show them how you can test that by throwing in a container and cheating? I could, but yeah, I'm not just... going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, now I've got my title here. The reason you guys don't have to do this step, you can easily format a, a title. But the reason I do it is I like control over it. So if I want it closer, and sometimes your data, you know, has room where the, your dashboard doesn't. So sometimes it's helpful to have that full control over, you know, your, your, your title. Sorry, I had a hard time speaking today for some reason. Um, I'm gonna give it a title right now while we're talking titles. Um, Kevin kills moths. And I'm going to format that. I'm going to use a nice light font. And I'm going to make that bigger so that it is the focal point. Make that white. But these are things you guys can do. You don't have to be an artist. Like, all you have to do is actually have the desire to tell you the truth. There's, there's images out there. There's tools out there. Um, you know, you can do this would be a statement. So... I've got everything named. So here's another trick when you're doing a lot of text, copy and paste your last text to bring your formatting over. I'm gonna drag this in, paste that. So that's the same as my last one. It's on white, so you can't see it, but it's there. And uh, do location. And now it's there for all my time, all my, uh, titles, weapons used, that is level of effort. Title. I do think it's interesting that the bulk of your dead moths got actually fed, fed to your to your dog. So is this you know, it, it's kind of fascinating. We uh, just got a corgi. Um, God, about four months ago now. And the little guy just loves to eat anything you kill. Like, it's insane. Like, I have a handheld bug zapper, and uh, that dog will come running and just, just snarf up a moth. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, I don't know if I should go into doing formatting the KPIs or anything for the group, Heather. What do you think? Keep going. 
Uh, Anybody have any questions finished? out there? Do you have the finished KPIs already done? Let me um, just show it. I don't know if I do. Your screen for a second. I'll just show that one thing. I don't know if you knew what I was talking about, about the alignment. Let me control for two seconds. I'll show that piece. So, uh, so what I was talking about, um, I'll go ahead and finish this and I'll. Go from there. Okay, cool. I misspelled that too, trying to go fast. Close enough. Take it away, Chris. So, yeah, so I, what I was talking about is like, you know, for example, like one, one thing you can do is like, you know, obviously that these charts to make them actually aligned. The first thing is I always start with the top one and say, okay, well, this one is set on 651 and it's, and it's, and it's 360 wide. So that can easily map that to, to this one as well. Uh, I've already forgot 651 and three, what, what, whatever it was, our trail. I think 360. Three, 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 360. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's one kind of quick way to mesh things up is just to make their sizes the, uh, the uh, same. But, but that's, that's great for, for these pieces. So now those are the same length. The problem is, is that let's say now this one looks okay, but a lot of times we'll have, we'll have longer, longer words in this one, right? And so even though the graphs are the same size, as far as Tableau, the Tableau is concerned, this one needed more room for the, for the words. So what I was saying is that it's always good to line up these bars, which Tableau doesn't give you a way to do that by, by, by the pixels. So, so you have to kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of just, just, just do, do like an eyeball on it. But if you don't want to do an eyeball, you want to be exact, which I actually do, do a lot of times, is just grab, grab a container, hold down shift, bring it in, and then let's just color it. We'll just color it something, you know, that doesn't matter. We'll color this, this uh, green. So now I can use this edge to kind of draw on my, I might, might use this other edge actually, so I can pull it back if I need to. So now I can align this here. You have better control of your mouse than I do, Kevin. But, but this will give you that line to be able to see. And you can also make it a little bit um, transparent so you can see through it. But it'll let you see how too far those are off. So as you see, I, I don't have them lined up perfectly, even though I kind of thought thought I thought I did, but now I see that I don't. This one has to go over over kind of a smidge. So a lot of times you can use, you know, you know, use these containers just for alignment purposes, uh, for 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 uh, stuff stuff like that. Does that make sense? Does that uh, help, Kevin? Or you think that was a? No, I think I, it's that, pretty cool. I didn't know. That's cool. I didn't know. I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. You're kind of using it as a rule, right? It's pretty yeah. cool. We are having a staff training along with you all. I know, right? <laughs> this is great for us. Uh, just, There's a on. lot of great things in Chris's head that we don't always get out unless we have these opportunities to chat with you all. Oh, so. assume, assume, we, assume, assume we all did this. Right, but you know what happens when you assume, right? right. Make an ass out of you and me, so we can't make assumptions like that, right? That's great. So, that's funny. So yeah, so anyway, I'll do one KPI and then kind of stop. I think you guys kind of get it. Yeah. Um, so same with KPIs. So KPIs, for those of you who don't know, key performance indicators, companies work off of them. Like, you know, what is, what? it's kind of the why. Why are we doing this? What are we after? It's the main roll up number, right? So again, I'm gonna hide um, the title and then I'm going to change the container to fill with. I already have that, so that's good. And now I'm just going to control click format and we're back to formatting. I'm gonna come down to sheet and I'm just gonna change this to, I don't know, probably 24. 24 will fit, bigger will fit too, that's crazy. What was I thinking? And then I'm gonna ch change the color on that as well while I'm in there to white. I'm going to change the fill of my container to none. And now I've got like a nice KPI in there, no distractions and very clear. So if you come here and you're just after that, there it is. Um, gonna close that out, drag a text up there. Forgot what it was. Kills. How can I forget that? Yeah, while he's doing this, so the other, so, one thing, if you are if you are going to create your own uh, your headers, it's 
really good to do those before you hide your titles. I always do that. I just try to do yeah. yeah. The other, so this is, sorry, go ahead. No, no, um, I was going to say that the other thing is that, that Kevin kind of glossed over, I think it's really subtle is, is that, is that, that these containers that he built in, in, in like Photoshop or whatever he built them in, you, you know, ha have, have these like rounded corners. So I think that that's a really good, um, just a just kind of kind of a professional look because what happens is is in, is, is in Tableau like like everything's square, so a lot of times when you can get more kind of smooth shapes, uh, there's a lot of times that we do, you know, we'll do circles or ovals or whatever, but just having those rounded corners just make a just just just, just make it look like it's like it's like it's like it's on a purpose. So if you can do those, I think it's key. So just formatted all those by using my little copy formatting tool, which is so handy. And I guess I will finish it, guys, seeing how no one's got any questions. Um, I am still watching the Q&A, and I'm not seeing any, seeing lots of good comments that people are excited about the tips that are there, but no new questions, so that's totally fine. But it is Drag fun seeing more. some of the names in here, people that we know and some that are new friends, so it's great to have you join it. And Kev, I do have the um, finished one that you did earlier. No time now. For the students, if you wanted me to show that. <laughs> looks like you've got ah, We'll just... We'll just do this one. Ah. I just didn't want to eat up anybody's time if they weren't interested in this. So, so you see, see the question that was asked? Kevin, no. I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and start. I'll go ahead and pull up something to show this. Well, let me let me just show this real quick. Yep. Bye bomb. So just this is what you can do. And you guys can get there with a little practice. You don't need to be an artist. But there is a lot of alignment and formatting to get to this level. So go ahead, Chris. Well, stop, 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 so the question was, when do when you do phone layout, you'll need to create a custom background for mobile sizing too? Yes, was the question. You do. And what I tell you is sometimes you just can't achieve on mobile what you can achieve on um, desktop. It's, it's real estate, right? You can't tell the whole story. Your story just can't turn sideways. So focus to one experience per view and always make sure there is a next view down. So in web design, you're taught, have the experience, but show something right underneath it. So people know there's more to scroll, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna use a background, you don't have to have a colossal background to deal with the scroll. Just do the first like part of it, you know, probably about, I don't know, the first, think about it, the first three sc scrolls have your, your image in the background and then pick a background color that matches that image and just carry it through. Because otherwise it's too big. It's too big of a file. So the one I'm showing now is, is kind of a good example of that. This is kind of the finished dashboard. That this uh, we're, we're lucky enough to have this data is not, not real. It's, it was built for, for, for this client that, 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 that does real estate. So th these are all leads they have coming in the door and we wanted to look at different ways to look at stuff. Um, and so, but this kind of exactly to your, to your, to your uh, question is to build the phone layout, it has to be designed differently. So we have a different view and we even have some graphs that are, that are different because we needed a different layout. Like even for example, this leads, leads detail doesn't show as much detail here. I only have lead type and last, last, last update. First, I go back to here. I have deal name. I have you know, first name, last name, I have, have a lot more stuff, right? So, so to, 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 to do that, it's kind of cheating a little bit. I'll see if I can find it really quick is so to, um, so as, if you've built any of these, you know, kind of the trick with Tableau is um, for the most part, you can't have, I'm going to actually, I'm going to go back to the phone because I can't find it quickly. Let's see what the, what the layout is. So donut leads dashboard. Where's my wouldn't be in tile. I wouldn't put it in there. And that's my header. I was looking for my no. Looking for my my image. Should be right there. It's not. 
Uh, oh, 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 that, that, um, that tells you what, what, what it is. So this one doesn't, so this phone layout doesn't have a, I, I have an image with it. All I've done is have containers that I just use to, to do, do some shading. I need to background formatting on yeah. the, yeah. On the right. sheet so, itself. So, so yeah, also a lot of times we will take, uh, you know, we'll take um, this, this image and we'll, we'll actually make a foam version of it. So it does have to be longer. It does have to, um, you know, to do things. So if we wanted this background kind of peachy color to kind of make things stand out, then we could do that. But in this case, I decided to not create another image and just use some background shading to kind of line things up and kind of have breaks between gray uh, grouping and then black grouping and then gray background and then black and that kind of stuff. And then you can go and down as long as you, long as you want. Um, and then we have, how do you handle layout rotation on mobile, assuming the background has sections for the KPI? Um, the answer is you don't try to control mobile. You're going to go insane. You would, you would block it. So like right here, how Chris has these four blocked right here on his mobile layout. Go ahead and go back to your mobile real quick, Chris. He's got them locked up here. So even if you rotated the phone or had a different view, these guys stay where they're supposed to be. So I, I don't think you'd have to worry about it, um, but you do design to it. You you know, the experience is that block is KPI, right? Like the next block is another story. Yeah. And, does and that, does also, that answer your question or no? And how I have yep, you- Michael's saying, there's also one more question. Um, not sure if it was by design, but if there is a way to have the data refresh a little more slowly. Oh, um, no. So you mean that's from clay yeah yeah so th this feature here is kind of the new um uh is is this piece that, that's like animations so um i have had it on a slow i can make it be very slow if you wanted so now when you click this it's going to refresh much much slower or e even if you wanted to choose your own you could type in custom i want it to be five seconds so you can totally totally do that so now it's going to be like Crazy, crazy slow. Ooh, that takes some time. So, yeah, you can totally do that. Um, I think that we're like, I, I think where we're landing is between the one second and, and, and on some we've done like a, like a second and a half, but that seems to be kind of the right, the right speed. Cause I mean, it's definitely cool the first few times you see it, but then, but, at, but, but, but kind of after, after that, you're like, okay, I, I just need the answer. I need the flash animation. Does that, I, I think I think it answered your question. Is that what you Very wrote? cool. Yep. It says very cool. Thanks. So, all right. So we are um, at 11.53. Um, if there's no more questions, um, we are happy to end a few minutes early. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are going to be doing this on the first Friday of every month. Um, so uh, just, you know, make sure you're on our mailing list. If, if uh, you have friends that are not and you want to add them too, we would welcome that. Um, we'd love to have that. In the meantime, um, I will put that link um, one last time to our question form. So as questions arise for you in between the Tableau Live sessions, um, you do have this ability to um, reach out to us. Um, and let me make sure this is going to everybody. Um, for our questions um, throughout. So just make sure to reach out to us via um, questions. The other option um, that you have as well is if you go to our website, um, let me share my screen. And if you go to uh, boulderinsight.com, you can also get on our calendar. Um, and if you have a more difficult um, so a problem that you're trying to solve and you need a few hours with us, that's not a quick um, question for us to answer. Um, you can schedule time directly with Chris's calendar um, from our um, from our web pages, anywhere you see that red button. Um, that's how you can get to us and schedule 30 minutes, an hour, two hours with him. Those are paid times, um, but um, I'm telling you, uh, it is a great investment and time well spent. I have lost hours of my life by not going um, to Chris um, some, some things, and uh, he could get me there faster. Uh, that's how we've you know been able to onboard um, our team is by having him as a resource. Um, and you can also get on my calendar um, and some of the other training team folks' calendars as well if you need um, some time if Chris's calendar is booked. Um, so 
Uh, the other thing really, really quick before we end, I was yeah. going to Q&A and I, I realized that I can just show you what that, what, what, what that, what that looks like if we go side to side. Oh, right? great. It has the ability to switch to like, you know, switch, 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 switch to the whole uh, landscape mode. So it is going to stretch things out. Um, I probably would do this one a little differently. I'd maybe, you know, not have this, this actually container be, be actually fit, you know, maybe not distribute evenly. I may kind of cheat on that because it looks better there, but, but other than that, it looks fine. So, but that would, that, that, that's another feature that you have there. So. Very cool. Awesome. Well, we have so enjoyed having you all here. We'll um, make sure there's no more questions. I'm checking the Q and A, the chat. Um, you do, I believe, still in this webinar, you should have an ability to raise your hand, I believe, too. So I'm you used to. Sure. Yeah, I think that might be in my Zoom room. I might have to set up that in the Zoom webinar since we shifted to webinar. So I will find, uh, add those back in if they're not in there. But, so, so one last, one last yeah. comment, and this is something, Heather, Kevin, I know you guys know, but we haven't really talked about, just since this group is here, we'd love, love to get some feedback on this. One of the things that we're finding uh, for a lot of our clients is that instead of us coming in and doing the work for you, what really seems to be resonating is actually have us um, come into your company wh where where we have a set number of hours per week or per month or anything you have. So 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 so, so actually that that already available to kind of for 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 for, 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 for like mentoring. Um, uh, we, 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 we have, um, so, so we, so we have some like a big, big tech clients now that what we're finding is if, if, if we can have me and Kevin work on the front part of a, um, part of a dashboard and say, okay, well, here's your image. So we're going to go, we're going to help you find the right, you know, the right data story, yeah. the, right, the right data story, the right color story. We're going to lay things out and help you figure that out then you can go and build all the Tableau elements that you want. And if there's anything that we have mocked up and designed, say it's, for example, say it was one of those, like those, those, those uh, donut charts. If you don't know how to do that, then you give us a ring. We have a scheduled meeting on Monday. We go over exactly how, how to kind of build that. So instead of you feeling like, hey, I've got to go to training and I've got to soak up all this knowledge and I got to memorize it and be able to apply it in six months, 12 months later, you don't have to do that. So it's kind of this, this as needed uh, training, uh, training mentoring, we'll call it uh, session that that really works out that kind of grows you as your own, your, your own, you're your, 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 your only got a skill level. And the other, the other thing to add to it, and I think we've got about four clients that we're doing that with now, Chris, but uh, the other thing that happens is your problems are unique to your dashboards. And what we run in time and time again is the, the, the answer for the solve may be different based on your data set. And it usually is. So sometimes you can't Google your way out of it is kind of what we say. So anyway, you guys have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next month. So glad that you all could join. Um, yeah, take care. And uh, if you ever need us, you know how to reach us. So, um, and we'll see you next month. Take care. Bye-bye.